opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment. Did you capture it? Or just let it slip? Yo. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on his sweater already. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. Brought to you by Viner Forgates and the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from CQ Stadium. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show, Maryland over Loyola, 11 to 4. As we said, halftime, Loyola got close, Maryland started to pull away, and then just became dominant. The defense is spectacular. And I know that a lot of people don't watch lacrosse to see defense, but if you ever wanted to see a defense, this is one to take a look at. Mason and Bruce are away from the camera, so it's just me, Wayne, uh, for the post game today. We have, since this game was on Big Ten Plus, we are gonna have a separate reel of every goal that the Terps scored, so you can take a look at that. What you saw today was a mix of youth, along with the veteran leadership, with Logan back there, Ajax Zapatello, the emergence of the midfielders, which was an absolute key to winning the championship a few years ago, you can start to see that again. You got long poles racing down the field, getting in the offense and scoring. You've got just such an aggressive in-your-face defense from those shorties. And then the guys in the back line are just, just out of this world. Loyola came in after stopping on Georgetown. They got three goals when the game mattered. And they were three in a row. Maryland made some adjustments and shut them out the rest of the way. You're going to give the, the player of the game to Logan, but it's really that whole group that just stifled Loyola. Now, Maryland's offense is not clicking at the rate that they could be or they might be later this year, um, but you do have to like the balance. There's no particular person really to shut down on Maryland's offense. Everybody got in the mix. You saw it again today. And then when you get those guys rushing up the field and unsettled uh, defense to offensive transition, trapping the opposition offensive middies on the field, and then you still work the ball. Not only is that an effective offense, but you're wearing out the other team. And and that's part of the this style of play. I think it's going to be much better as the season goes along. And you come back and you've got Princeton. Uh, you know, you're at Syracuse. You've got Notre Dame coming up. It, Maryland just plays an amazingly tough schedule. And, and they will continue to do so. Uh, that's just the style that John Tillman wants to play. You can see a, a lot of change from last week to this week. The adjustments of how to get the ball out and how to get across midfield. Uh, I don't think Maryland had one failed clear today where they had three last week. And those are glaring because Maryland usually doesn't do that. So hats off to the people who put this game plan together. And we are going to go inside and listen to Coach Tillman and some of the players. And we'll be back after the game. Maryland 11, Loyola 4. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. We have Tanya Stamos. Your son scored his first goal as a Terp. What was that like for you? Oh my gosh, it's great. I mean, we love it when the defense scores, but it's even better when it's your own son scored his first goal. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the D.C. metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. Here with Colin after the game, you play one hell of a defensive midi. Why'd you pick Maryland? I think just the idea of playing against the best every single day. You know, he was in my last year. I didn't want to look back and think that I didn't push myself to play against the best competition every single day. And, you know, the coaching staff and the players we have, I'm consistently pushing. It's a great group of guys and coaches, and you know this, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so I, I can't be any more thankful than I am right now to be here. Part two of the post-game show, just as like we do at football, high above the field here at the Gossip Team House. Uh, Going to review a couple of the stats here. Maryland, Weirman goes 18 of the 18. He gets 14. 
14 of 18. Amazing percentage for Luke Weirman. Uh, earlier, I said that Maryland did not have any failed clears. They actually did have two. Uh, Logan only had 12 saves. I mean, Maryland, Zapatello, the rest of the gang, shut down those guys to such an extent when they romped the Loyola attack, uh, who also are on an All-American list. You know, they do a good job, too, and they are trying to score. And it just was brought up in the press conference again. What a fantastic job Maryland did in holding down uh, your Loyola attack. So we're talking about holding down you know, Evan James, uh, Matthew Minicus, Adam Poitras, and these guys combined for 13 goals and five assists last week on just 29 shots. And once again, Maryland defense is just, just fantastic. On the goal scoring side, Maryland spreads it around. Daniel Maltz has two, Spanos gets one, Irksa, Molliver, Zach Whitaker, Owen Murphy, who had the game winner last week, Ryan Syracuse, Colin Burlace, that pole goal was great. George Stamos, short stick D midi goal, fantastic. And then Elliot Dubik as the game won, uh, wound down. And a bevy of assists, Spanos getting two, Brennan, Irksa, Kelly, Molliver, Jake McDonald, a long pole, and Kevin Tucker on that last Dubik goal. Total domination by the Terps at Syracuse next week, then Princeton here. The road does not get any easier, but a complete performance from Maryland leads to 11-4 victory. This has been the Big Dog Post Game Show. We will see you next week after the service.